Jim Grimm, welcome to Eden. Uh, thank you for your keynote this morning. It was uh, very enthralling. A lot of people resonated with it. Uh, one of the things that intrigued us all was your use of uh, a strap line which said, uh, the uneducation of technologists. What does that mean? Um, uneducation of the technologists was a uh, quote from well, a title of a paper that Brian Lamb and I wrote for the Rust Journal back in 2009. And what I think, Brian, it was Brian's title, and what I think we were getting at, and the idea behind it is, you know, with the kind of um, maelstrom of technologies and the way in which the web changes how some of the ways we think about teaching and learning, um, how do we as a community of educational technologists learn to kind of work with that and work within that? And the uneducation was kind of letting go of some of the kind of preconceptions, some of the idea of grafting what we do in the classroom face to face onto the online. And I think this idea of uneducation became about you know, engaging the maelstrom. And he has a beautiful quote from Edgar Allan Poe in there, which Marshall McLuhan said he had referred back to when writing The Mechanical Bride as a way to kind of rethink how media is rewiring us, like a, a form of understanding new modes of media. And particularly McLuhan would always talk about this in relationship to electricity. And so much of what McLuhan was saying in the 60s and 70s resonates so deeply with how we're thinking about the web and the kind of fragmentation and atomic redistribution of um, our sense of time and space. It's, it's cool. And so I think of on education as an expression of that for technologists in teaching and learning. You mentioned the 70s. Back in the 70s also, even Illich wrote a book called Deschooling Society. Does that align, does, it, does that have synergy with what you're talking about, that kind of idea? I think it does, and I think a lot of people have referred back to, you said, you know, Illich, Freire, um, this notion of rethinking some of the kind of institutional structures around teaching and learning and both the limits and possibilities of that. And I think one of the things we get into, and Illich talks about this, so does Ferry, like there's an exchange model of the classroom and it's a very much you know, unilateral and the question of control is very situated. And I think with some of the ways we think about the web is it decenters control, right? It's a decentered platform. And it's not to say that control isn't reforming in some real ways on the web, but there is a space of struggle there that has given voice to a whole new way of interacting around uh, media. And uh, I do think unschooling in relationship to the web, it's not coincidental that the two reemerged as a question over the last de decade and opened up a whole possibility for better or for worse to disrupt education. And I think that's an interesting moment we're in and what that means defining that um, so it doesn't just become another buzzword that sells a product. One of the highly disruptive things that you attempted, which uh, has, is still running, is DS106. Um, and, and not everyone's heard of it, but for those who haven't, perhaps could you explain what it is and how that links into what you've just said? Well, first, as you know, I have to establish it's for life, right? right. And uh, that's a joke because the people who do take DS-106, uh, they get passionate about it. It becomes not only a class, it becomes a community of people who share and create and build. And the for life is a notion that a class doesn't necessarily have to be a 15-week experience that you go through, you take the class, you leave. And, DS-106 started out as that, and in some ways it still is for 25 or 30 students a semester. But it's also a really kind of engaged community of people who in 2010 started as a small class at Mary Washington, but in 2011, based on you know, people's interest in creating their own domain and building their own space, became an open course where over 500 people took it, and we had people from all over the world sharing, and it became a kind of a marketplace for creative ideas. It's like if you want to create something cool and get feedback, you would use the DS-106 hashtag on Twitter, or you'd go to the assignment bank for DS-106 and you'd submit an assignment. You know, or you'd decide to drop your blog off into the feed and see what other people say. Um, it was an ecosystem for learning, and it was an e ecosystem and community for creativity. There was a radio station created by Grant Potter. The, the, the assignment bank was created by Martha Burtis. You know, Alan Levine created the remix machine. I mean, so many people went into building this. And even the students created a site that was a part of the ecosystem where other students could submit what they thought the work that inspired them. And so, like, everybody was building the ecosystem as it unfolded. And I think there's that expression, building the airplane while it's flying. And DS-106 really does kind of 
capture that spirit of teaching and learning as a process. Thank you, Jim, for your insights today. It's been great talking to you. Right. And uh, thank you also for the time you spent with us. Thank you. Thank you.